going to look at oxygen tubing today. Now in a few weeks we'll be talking about oxygenation in much more detail, but to start with I just want to talk about taking care of a patient that has oxygen tubing. Some things we need to think about, some things we need to do to make sure we're keeping our residents safe, okay, when they're having oxygen tubing. So when we're looking at tubing, and let me just see why this isn't quite moving here, there we go. Um, as far as what would a resident look like who was having difficulty breathing. If a person's complaining of difficulty breathing or they're complaining of feeling short of breath, um, what we might see is someone who looks air hungry. So normally respirations are quiet and they're effortless. They shouldn't take a lot of effort. Um, but it, So if you're seeing someone using all their accessory muscles and they're kind of trying to pull the air in, they're like, <gasps> and, they're, and they're like using their chest muscles and their abdominal muscles to try to draw air in, you know that they're probably having difficulty. They're, their breathing may become noisy. So normally, effortless, quiet, you shouldn't hear a person's breathing without a stethoscope. So if you're hearing ab abnormal sounds, you're hearing harsh sounds on inspiration, which is called strider, or you're hearing crackles, or you're hearing the gurgling sound, you know that they're probably having some difficulty. Their respirations might get fast, okay? They might get really fast. Um, and you might notice colors start to change, that they might have a blueness, it's called cyanosis, around their lips, around their nail beds. So those are some signs that someone might be having difficulty breathing. And our role in this is, one, if we think our resident's having difficulty breathing, we're going to want to make sure we get a nurse right away, have the nurse come and assess them. If the person is on oxygen, our role in helping them with that oxygen therapy is we can gather equipment up, we can make sure that the oxygen tubing underneath it, that there's no pressure ulcerations. We can make sure that when we're doing our vital signs, if they're on oxygen, we can get an oxygen saturation. But we, we are not allowed to dial in oxygen flow, okay? Oxygen is actually considered a drug, and we're not allowed to give drugs as a CNA, so it is something that, um, because it is considered a medication, we cannot give it. So the RN or the LVN is gonna actually have to dial in the oxygen flow. So oxygen therapy, the doctor will order the how, how much oxygen to give and in which way it should be delivered. So again, as I mentioned, we cannot dial in that oxygen flow, but we can gather up the supplies. We can make sure the person's not having any difficulty. We always wanna make sure we're aware of that tubing. So this kind of oxygen right here this one plugs into a wall. This is the type of system you're going to see hospitals use. They have oxygen piped into the walls um, behind the patient. This flow meter will go into the wall. You dial in the oxygen flow, how many liters per minute you want it to go, and then the oxygen tubing hooks right on here. This is what we're going to see in a nursing home. This is a, it is on wheels, so it is somewhat portable, but they're large bulky tanks and they hold a lot of oxygen. They dial in, the, they turn it on here, they dial in the oxygen flow here, and if the person has oxygen and it's drying their nose or their mouth out, we can put a humidifier on it. What a humidifier does is the oxygen will actually flow through the humidifier and put some moisture into the oxygen so it doesn't dry them out too bad. So if you ever have a resident who's getting oxygen and they're complaining of their nose is dry, their mouth is dry, they're really uncomfortable with it, just talk to the nurse about it because it's really simple to get a humidifier and get it hooked up. This is a type of portable tank, so if our resident is going to be going to the activities room or going to physical therapy and they need oxygen still, this is a portable tank. Um, it'll have a gauge on it as to how much oxygen is there. It would obviously not hold as much as this. Um, the oxygen flow is usually either adjusted, there's a dial here or a dial on top, depending on what the tank looks like. One thing I want to mention, just looking at this picture, is you would never leave an oxygen tank just sitting on the floor. Oxygen tanks should always be in oxygen holders. So they make portable oxygen holders that, so you can wheel it around on wheels. Because oxygen is highly flammable, and if you knock this oxygen tank over, it could potentially explode. So we want to make sure that it's always, if the person goes in a wheelchair, we'll have oxygen holders on the back of the wheelchair. Uh, and so you would want to make sure it's put in that holder. Never, never just set it on the ground, never lay it down in the bed. Okay? It needs to always be in an oxygen holder. And then they also make small portable um, oxygen tanks. Now these don't last very long here, 
But if you have a person who's really active, wants to go shopping, wants to go out to the store, wants to go out and play with their grandkids, so we're not talking nursing home setting, but in a home environment, you might see oxygen given this way. So oxygen devices deliver a, a certain amount of oxygenation. Again, the physician will determine how is best to deliver it. But oxygen cannula, a nasal cannula, is, is the most common way it's going to be done. So oxygen is usually given through 1 to 15 liters per minute. And so a nasal cannula will deliver between 24 and 44 percent oxygenation. Now the way we determine, so if the physician says the person's going to be on 2 liters of oxygen, each liter of oxygen adds an extra 3 percent of oxygenation to the person. So room air is 21% oxygenation. You and I are breathing in a 21% oxygen concentration. So if the doctor orders six or two liters of oxygen, two liters, each liter's worth 3%, so we're giving them an extra 6%, which means they would be, plus the 21 that, that's happening from room air, so they would be getting a 27% concentration of oxygen. So that's kind of how we calculate it. Nasal cannula here, like I said, is the most common way it's going to be given. Other ways, um, it can be given as a simple mask. Now, if, if people are used to the mask, it's not usually a big deal, but some people get kind of claustrophobic when they have that mask over their face. But um, a mask, simple mask, can usually give about 40 to 60% concentration of oxygen. And this is called a non-rebreather. And a non-rebreather goes over their mouth. It actually has valves on it, so, um, so, they're just, so they aren't drawing any room air. They aren't drawing any room air when they breathe. There is a reservoir bag here, and the oxygen is turned up to 15 liters, and this reservoir bag fills up completely, and every time they take in a breath of air, they're breathing in 100% oxygenation. So um, it's not diluted with room air in any way. So this is the most that they can give oxygen through a, without having to go to a machine that's going to force air down into their lungs. A Venturi mask. Um, it, it's, it looks like a simple mask, but it has these little valves in it where the doctor can actually order a precise amount of oxygen. And then small children, a lot of times, will have oxygen hoods or oxygen tents. Now, again, this is what a humidifier looks like. So if a patient's complaining about, it, you know, their, their nose is really dry, their mouth is really dry all the time, uh, we, we don't even have to get a doctor's order for a humidifier. The, you know, the nurse will just say, yeah, sure, go ahead and get one, and we can actually hook a humidifier up. Um, and it will just, the oxygen will flow through it, so it will moisturize that air and keep it from drying out too bad. So some oxygen safety, some things to keep in mind when we're taking care of a resident with oxygen. No smoking. Okay? They are not allowed to smoke. Now, most of the facilities nowadays are non-smoking facilities anyway, but if you do happen to work at a facility that still allows smoking, they cannot smoke while they're on oxygen. It is highly flammable, um, very dangerous. So we should remove substances that easily ignite. So that means um, matches, um, lighters, incense, candles, anything like that should not be around the person. We want to make sure we're keeping oxygen sources away from the heat. And make sure you're turning off electrical items before you just unplug them. Okay, don't just, you know, some people just grab the cord and unplug it versus bending down and actually, you know, physically or turning off the machine and unplugging it without just pulling on the cord. We recommend that you only use electrical items that have three prongs to them, so th that means it has a ground to it. And we even recommend that they don't use clothing or wool blankets, things that cause a lot of static electricity. Some other safety rules is you're not allowed to adjust that flow rate. Can't stress this enough. It is a medication. When we start learning our disease processes, we'll be talking about a disease called COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And that's made up of chronic bronchitis and emphysema. A person who has emphysema, they can breathe air in, but they have a hard time exhaling the old air and the CO2 out. And over a period of time, their body actually, their oxygen drive is actually um, regulated off of that CO2 level that's in their body. So if you give them a high dose of oxygen and you wipe out their CO2 values, they can actually quit breathing. You can actually kill your patient. So it's really important that we realize it is a drug. Now, if you are young and you're healthy, and I know oxygen bars were a big fad there for a little bit, you're, you're tired, get a boost of oxygen. 
Okay, if you did 100% oxygenation for a little bit, it's not probably going to hurt you. But infants it does. Infants it can actually cause injury. And with adults, like I said, if they have those chronic respiratory issues, it can be very, very dangerous. We should not remove the oxygen unless it's okayed by a nurse. So a lot of the residents will be on oxygen PRN. PRN means as needed. So oxygen as needed. And so that means they can take it off when they want. They can put it back on when they want. So it is something that if you have a patient that's on oxygen as PRN and the patient says, oh yeah, I want to take it off when I go to the shower. I want to take it off when I go to the bathroom. Then it's okay to do that. It's okay to just take the tubing off and then you can just help them put it right back on when you get them back to bed. Um, if they're on continuous oxygen though, then we're supposed to leave them on it at all times. So if we're taking them over to the bathroom, we'd have to move them over to one of those portable tanks. If something seems wrong to you, they are not oxygenating well, they look like they're having that respiratory difficulty that we talked about, breathing difficulties, they look short of breath, they look like they're air hungry, like they're using those accessory muscles to breathe, their color is starting to turn bluish in the nail beds and around the mouth. Um, sometimes when they have difficulty breathing, they get confused or dizzy because they're not getting as much oxygen up to their brain. You want to make sure that we let the nurse know. We need to make sure there's no kinks in the tubing. So sometimes if a patient says, well, it doesn't feel like I'm getting as much oxygen, check and see if there actually get, has oxygen coming out of that tube. Maybe the tank is empty. Maybe the tank actually needs to be replaced. And when we do use portable tanks, I should have mentioned this. Let me back up here. There's gate, I did mention that there's a gauge here that tells you how much oxygen is in that tank. And usually the tanks start off around, I think it's around 2,500 uh, PSI of oxygen. When it gets down to the 500 PSI value, you need to start thinking about changing your tank out before it runs dry, especially if they're on continuous oxygenation. So the other thing is, is so make sure your tank isn't dry, but if they still are saying, you know, it doesn't feel like I'm getting my air properly, just check and make sure there's no kinks. Sometimes the tubing has just gotten pinched, or they're laying on it, it's gotten caught in the side rail somehow, so just kind of follow your tubing and make sure it looks okay. Um, any signs of abnormal difficulty breathing or signs of hypoxia. We said hypoxia is that lack of oxygen to the tissues or the cells. And signs of that, what we've already talked about, dizziness, lightheadedness, altered level of consciousness. That means not being aware of their surroundings completely. They might complain of chest pain, shortness of breath. Um, they might, their heart rate will usually go up. The heart rate will go up when they're not oxygenating well because the heart try, speeds up to try to get more what it, oxygen it does have everywhere throughout the body. Um, so any signs that look abnormal to you, make sure you talk to the nurse about it right away. Um, and if there is a fire, so I know I'm saying you are supposed to dial in oxygen flow, but if you have, if your patient, if there's a fire in your patient's room, you need to get your patient out of there. If you can take the whole portable tank with you, great, but if not, shut the oxygen off if you can and get your patient out of there. We'll get them over to a portable tank once we get them to a safe spot. The other thing to think about when we're caring for that patient with oxygen is check for signs of irritation. Okay, and the place that we have problems is right here under the nose, right here on the cheekbones, and right here over the ears. So even if you have a patient who's on oxygen all the time, it is okay to actually, so you get, you're getting ready to clean them up, go ahead and get your washcloth ready, and you can take the oxygen tubing, you know, just take it off behind the ears and, and loosen it, wash the face real quick, dry it, and then put the oxygen tubing right back on. But you always want to look over these ears. I have seen pressure ulcers many, many times right here on the ears and right here on the cheekbones. And so take a look. If it's really getting red or it's uncomfortable for them, they make these little tiny foam pads. They look kind of like those noodles that you play in a pool with. They're split on one side and it just kind of will wrap around. This little foam will wrap around the tubing so it'll just kind of cushion those areas. Um, and so we can just ask the nurse for those and we can actually put those on. Um, so check the, signs, the face for irritation regularly. Keep the face clean and dry. Frequent oral care, especially if they're on a mask, it really dries the whole mouth out. So just frequent oral care, things to moisten the mouth with. But if they want, you guys, if they want um, chapstick and stuff, we need water-based lubricants, not oil-based like your Vaseline products because um, that could actually be more flammable. 
make sure the humidifier is working and you can tell a humidifier is working because it will be bubbling you'll actually see little air bubbles as the air is going through it and we will stop there oh so the other thing i just want to mention is is when you're turning your patients though so if you have to turn or reposition your patient please again make sure you know where your tubing is Find the tubing, get them rolled or repositioned as you need to, and then check your tubing again. Make sure it's not kinked or tangled up in things. And that's true for any tubing. Anytime you have tubing, urinary tubes, oxygen tubes, feeding tubes, always know where your tubing is. Always protect it so it doesn't accidentally get ripped out or pulled out. So again, we'll talk about oxygenation in more detail in a few weeks, but I wanted to just kind of give you a heads up on how to care for a patient with oxygen.